Alright. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are. My name is Mixmaster PJ, and I'm going to be showing you guys some Funhouse. Funhouse is a uh, former Double Dare knockoff on the Fox Kids Network from the early 90s. Um, it's hosted by J.D. Roth, and the, the wonderful pictures you guys will see once uh, we leave the title screen of him. It's supposed to be him, although it's a wonderful meme in the community that he actually he looks a lot like Tim Allen. But I'm sure a few of you guys are already diving into Wikipedia or YouTube to be like, what in the world is this thing about? In typical NES fashion, it's titled after a television show or movie or any kind, and then the game has nothing to do with it. So it follows the wonderful Back to the Futures, the Who Framed Roger Rabbits, the American Gladiators before it, where there's just so many liberties taken that the game itself doesn't really match what you were expecting when you bought the wonderful box home from your uh, Toys R Us. So, um, we're going to get started here um, in just a sec. One thing I do want to note um, is that the controls for this game are really, really crazy. So, um, I'm going to try and describe them as best I absolutely can, but um, just understand that the up and down buttons don't do anything in this game, and I'll let you guys try and figure out how I'm actually controlling the character at first. And then, uh, as we get a few levels in, then I'll explain a little bit better for you guys. Alright, so, here's Funhouse. We're gonna get started in three, two, one, go. Alright, there's, uh, J.D. Roth, as I said. He said the meme in the community is that, uh, he is Tim Allen there. And we're gonna go through these levels that are in, kind of like, uh, I wanna say they're kind of like Mario style, where they've got a floor and they've got a, a room, which is kind of like world and level. Um, there are 12 floors and 6 rooms in each floor. Your job in each level is to shoot all the targets. So this first floor is really introductory. They're like, hey, four corners. Guess where the targets are at? They're in the four corners. All right. So we're going to walk around and shoot all them. We're going to grab the key, and that's how you escape the room. There's not a single thing like that in a TV show. There's no tomato throwing. There's not anyone rollerblading around and throwing things at targets and trying to do things quickly. There's no conveyor belts while you're on rollerblades, which seems really, really dangerous, especially for a kid's show. There's not random blobs that are just going back and forth trying to wreck your day. Alright, so we grab the key and get out of here. Those little white things down there are like coins, essentially. They just, you know, if we get 25, then we'll get an extra life. It's pretty inconsequential. We're not going to pay a lot of attention to it. So, here's our first variety of targets here. This one's called 1, 2, 3, because there are numbered targets 1, 2, and 3. So we have to shoot them in order. They're blinking, which means they're actuated. You're going to see a whole lot of targets on the screen on the next level, and um, what can actually happen uh, for a lot of the, uh, the targets there when they start goofing around. So check that in a sec here. So now we see eight of them. And you see as we kind of bump into them there, like... We have to shoot them exactly in order, so it's not going to work if we try and get... Oh, we got to grab the key. There we go. Backstream. Everything okay? Making sure everything you guys can see everything that you got there. Alright. This is going to be our first warp zone. Like I said, this is kind of a little bit Mario-like. So we're going to run up here. Ignore these targets for right now. And we're going to... Hit this wall and spawn that little gold block there, which is a shortcut. We're going to cut through a lot of the early introductory levels and jump to something a lot tougher here. This one's full of conveyors. So we got eight targets to shoot in order. If you miss one, it's not too punishing because the, the route is not that long where it's going to take you forever to get back to the target. But... They aren't too close together, so if you do miss one, you have to go around a whole entire lap. This key is kind of tough to grab, but not too bad. Okay. Thanks, chat. I was, didn't know if I needed to slam on some bitrate adjustments there. Alright. This is our first maze room. This, What I mean by that is this level is basically... It's really impossible for a beginner to beat if they've never seen it before. Um, the level is quite stretched out and all over the place. There's a lot of different routes that you can take. We're taking a very specific route. And if we stray from that, it's really easy to get lost. They really tuck away number one in a very hard-to-find place in the maze. So if you don't find that one, it's not like, like you can't even... You'll have to come back and shoot two after you shoot one. So it's not like you can shoot all the other targets and when you find that one, okay, cool, the level's over. 
No, you have to make sure that you get there and still somehow get back to the two in time. Okay, so we just completed a floor. I know that we did sort of complete floors one, two, and three before, but we didn't beat room six. They do this animation here at the end of each of the floors to show, hey, look how far you've made it through the obstacle course. This is the only thing that vaguely resembles the TV show. Um, like I said, it's kind of like a Double Dare knockoff, so it happens to have that, you know, obstacle course at the end of the game. This is one of our first really difficult levels here. You're going to see some ice physics in this level, which makes things obviously pretty tricky. But more than that, those little yellow uh, lifesaver-style bumpers can be really brutal and send you flying across the stage. So we're just going to try and stay literally as far away from them as we can. That was a really, really good pitching. I, I would... In world record attempts, I would love a 64. <laughs> Speaking of world record attempts, uh, in practicing for this game, we actually set it uh, on Thursday. Got pretty lucky there. No one had set a world record in almost a year. Alright, so we're going to grab that little white thing there. It took me probably 20 years of having this game before I realized that that's actually supposed to be like a skate. I thought it was like a surfboard before, but... It's apparently ice skates or rollerblades or whatever, but I assumed for the the, sort, the shortcut animation that I was actually on rollerblades this whole time. So, you know. Alright, this is a pretty brutal level with ice physics. The entire floor is going to be ice, which seems really dangerous for someone on rollerblades. But we're going to try and run through here. we got to watch out for these banana cannons. Alright, seems like it's at the bottom. Now it's going to be at the top. And oh, we got bumped anyway. Alright, got through there pretty cleanly. Alright, let's hit those. And the one thing that I try to do um, to save as much time as humanly possible is I want to throw the tomato on the pixel that I'm, like, perfectly within range to hit the target. And the reason being is that, especially for the last target, you can't really shoot through targets to one behind it, or you can't even leave the level until the key is spawned. So what ends up happening is if you wait until you're right on top of the target to shoot it, you then still have to wait for the entire animation of the key to show up before you're able to exit the level. So it's really important to shoot the target as soon as you can. Because see, I had to wait there for the key animation. So I want to really, really wait until... Um, like, as just the exact pixel that I can throw that tomato and still take it out. Alright, this is a very punishing level if we happen to miss one along the way. Because as you can see, the conveyors are really, really tight and strong there. If I happen to miss that too, the level is basically a death. Because you have to go basically around the entirety of the course here to make your way back to those numbers. So we really need to make sure we hit 7 and 8 here. If we miss 9, it's not the end of the world. But hitting 7 and 8 and then we're missing that, it's kind of rough. I would love more monitors, Templar. Absolutely, I'm a, I'm a big PVM porter. I'd stack them on top of each other if I could. Try and do that video wall of GoldenEye 64 where everyone really gets their own screen, although not really. 240p goodness. All right, this level is up and down, just like it said it is, and we're just gonna go up and down these little little like loops here. That big clock is really useful if you were a beginner to this level and you went up the wrong tunnel at first. Um, they add a pretty substantial amount of time to that timer in the corner. But it's not like it's uh, substantial enough where it takes forever to count down the time at the end of the level. Um, it only takes about, I don't know, half a second or so. You can watch the time tick down here. You're not going to save too much time. Um, by of trying to avoid the clock. You're going to lose time trying to avoid it and going off the course to do so. Alright, so this level has a clone in the next level as well that we'll see. Where we're going to just try and go counterclockwise and avoid getting shot in the middle there. It's a pretty good strategy for all of life, is just to not get shot. But it's especially important because that glop gun in the middle, we've seen a few of them before, but I haven't really explained it. Shoot these tiny little red pellets, and if they hit you, you lose three seconds for each shot. Which doesn't sound like it's too bad when you're at 26 seconds right now, but when you get hit, it kind of stuns you for a second. They can kind of just combo off on you sometimes. You get hit like four or five times in a row, and it makes the rest of the level basically impossible. So we'll try to avoid that. Come down here and grab eight. Alright. 
pretty good so far. And we're back on our obstacle course here. Now we're gonna go into World Six. Or, sorry, Floor Six. Didn't mean to, to Mario that up too much. Uh, we are gonna be taking a shortcut eventually in level six that'll jump us to level nine and then a shortcut in level nine will eventually take us to level 12. So while it seems like we've uh, got a whole lot of levels in front of us, it's not really too many. But this is where the run I feel like really starts. If you, five one's a tricky level, but then the level re the game really starts to turn the heat on at six one here. So we've got a lot of conveyors here that basically if you get sucked down that way at the bottom, you have to wait till that whole tunnel takes you back around. So you see the conveyor belts down at the bottom of the stage. They're gonna send. They're gonna try and send me to the exact same place that I started, and essentially restart the level. We don't want to do that. We just want to shoot these targets and get on out of here. Sixty-three is a fine time. Not the end of the world there. Be good. All right, binary system. We're gonna have all of our even numbers on the right side of the stage, and all of our odd numbers over here on the left side of the stage. And then we got these two tunnels here in the middle that are gonna take us back and forth between them. So we're gonna jump up here to grab two, and we're gonna cut across here up top right towards three and try and get a good U-turn. All right. So now that you guys have seen me use the controls for a bit. And I told you guys the up and the down button, or the up and down buttons aren't used at all. Um, let me explain how I'm controlling this here. Basically, I'm driving a car. I know it doesn't seem like it should be called that because it's a person running on a map, but that's really what I'm doing. I'm basically steering him left and right at all times. So when I press left, I'm actually just rotating him to the left. And when I press right, I'm rotating him to the right. So making U-turns is actually really the most time-consuming maneuver. Not because you're going somewhere where you just came from, but it's because you have to wait for your character to turn all the way around. It's not too hard to make short, precise turns, but making long, sweeping U-turns uses a lot of space and a lot of time. Yeah, man, tomatoes. This game was not about fruit conservation. All right, this was—they were, we were at a different time. We were able to waste food. For the sake of enjoyment of a kids game show ported video game. I didn't line myself up on two on purpose because I wanted to set myself up for a better U-turn. It's a little bit of a greedy maneuver because it might make the target a lot harder to hit, but you know, you're worried about your movement here in a speed run, so. Additionally, we're gonna try and line these diagonals up so that we don't fall, and we're not like zigzagging through there. Oh, U-turn didn't work out so well. That's okay. Now, going from 5 to 6 is nice and easy because it's straight across the corners. Going from 6 to 7 is so much harder because this lends itself to a down exit, but we want to try and go straight to the left, or straight to the right to get to 7. But then 7 to 8 is nice and easy, we'll just go straight down, just the way the tunnel exits us. Alright, there we go. So that was the clone of the counterclockwise we saw before. I love it! Keep it going! You got it, JD. All right. Here's another complete ice level once we get out of this entry area. This level is shaped like a gigantic plus sign. So they put numbers 1, 5, and an unnumbered one up here. We'll take out the unnumbered one and the 1. Go down here for 2. And this level's... The, the best way to save time on this level is just actually really, really smooth movements. We're going to avoid that stupid bumper in the middle. I hope I never hit one of those to show you guys what it's like because it wastes so much time. But at the same time, it's like... Kinda cool. It makes a neat little sound effect, too. Right, so we'll go down here for six. Lined up pretty well for the target already. Decent U-turn. Lay down, don't get near the target. Ooh, that was close. They also have a really strange hitbox, so I was surprised I did not get hit by that there. Um, the hitbox is basically a square that completely surrounds it, so there'll be times where you feel like, oh, I, I got right next to it, but you kind of would hit the corner of the square even though it wasn't actually the circle. So. Um, in 12-3, there's going to be two of them that actually have to shoot enough times to make go away. All right, so here's the shortcut I was talking about for level six. We're going to ignore all our targets. We're going to hope we don't get shot up by the glop gun. Uh-oh. That was very fortunate. Now, here's where the levels really can start getting punishing. So, you're going to see Tiptoe here. Um, 
they're gonna see the current of the conveyor belts is going the opposite way that we want to go. So what that means is we want to stay as far away from those conveyors as possible. We're just gonna stay here on this little island, this little uh, hallway in the middle, and hopefully those banana cannons don't mess us up too much. We can dodge. We gotta dodge those yellow bumpers as stated before. It's, oh, wow. Not lined up perfectly. Oh, there we go. Got pretty fortunate that it didn't send us too far away. But we didn't hit it at very high speed, so it didn't send us flying at very high speed. No donation required. I do what I can for the people. <laughs> yeah, it was a Fox Kids show that was uh, very, very similar to Double Dare. Alright, this level's quite lengthy, but we're going to have a couple of these power skates to kind of work our way through it. Or running shoes, or whatever they are. I'm going off what GameFAQ says, okay? That ASCII document from 2007, it says they were skates, so we're going to say they're skates. Also, if you're really up for a, for a treat, finding the GameFAQ FAQ there that somebody had, somebody took all these maps and basically drew them all with a bunch of backslashes and asterisks and letters and stuff. It was definitely my first foray into really taking this game seriously and looking at those maps and that was the best we had back then, alright? Like, I'm not trying to judge that guy. Thank that guy for, for making those things. He did a great job on the logo, too. It's just not really a game pack without a ridiculous logo made out of symbols. Alright. We messed up a little bit in the snake there by missing number two and having to go back and get it, but that's not too bad. Alright. So that's level 8. We're going to start out here at 9-1, called Fort Glop. Fort Glop is the level that I die on the second most, if I look at my live splits for, uh, or at least my runs die here the most. There are, the key is incredibly difficult to grab. And there are lots of places to lose time and essentially die. So we're going to try and make sure that that doesn't happen in a marathon here. Alright, so we're going to have to go to every single one of these little tiny, like, I guess they're like little blobs. One thing that we're going to do on purpose is we're going to hit all the numbered ones first and then save the unnumbered one for last. And the reason being is that there's seven numbered ones and one unnumbered one. And the seventh one has a horrible location to try and grab because it has all those bumpers around it and those bananas. So we're going to instead try to grab this one. So since we have, the, we have the ability to sequence whether or not we hit that one or seven last. We're going to wait for that banana cannon, then we're going to sprint here. Okay. Sometimes the timing just doesn't work out. Like, if you spawn that banana cannon at the wrong time, where you finally have the opening, now the glop gun is firing a bunch of pellets at you, and you just lose, and vice versa. So we want to try and make sure that we get there to, at a reasonable enough time where that there's a window for us to grab the key. All right, this aptly named level is chess. There's nothing complicated or difficult about this level. There's all going to be a bunch of unnumbered targets here that are on almost all of the, I guess, black squares or white squares. And we're going to make our way up here and avoid these obstacles as best we can to get to the numbered ones. So this we're going to try and thread the needle and stay off the conveyors, especially the ones that are fighting the way that we want to go. But we can then use them to our advantage down here. But we have to go down and ride the down ones. Right. That was not a great shot there, but um, that's a good target practice where you could try and throw the tomato from as far away as humanly possible and then just kind of slide over to the last second. Alright, this level is another one of the maze levels, like connect the dots we saw before. So we're going to simply go this way and. There's only three targets here, and this level's actually really fast if you, you know, played it before and you know exactly where they are. But it's a really miserable level for a first-timer who's just wandering around in all these tunnels where there's no targets whatsoever to hit. Oh, you mean Olmec in Legends of the Hidden Temple? That was a couple years later. <laughs> Alright, so... This level actually has a ton of targets, 17 of them to be, to be exact, well 16 now. But we're going to head all the way back here where they have target number one hidden in the furthest most corner from the start. 
and we're not going to go in any of those little side rooms yet because they're all going to be numbered a little bit higher or they're going to have this little current going against us there and we really want to have the, the the super skate to kind of fight against that a little bit better because it takes a lot of time you guys will see later in the level that without the super skate just like that it's really hard to fight against the conveyor um, it just takes a lot of time so we want to have the skate for as many of those as possible we are going to go in that room but the number four is in that room so we got to take care of that three first the real gotcha it's the room designer there thought that was a really good idea. So let me throw the three down here. That'll get him. Not everything else in this level that's miserable, but that that right there, that'll be the trick. It breaks their spirits. Don't go up. If you go up, basically you're looking at a game over. It is a long, lengthy way to absolutely nothing. And then this little hallway here that's just full of conveyors going the opposite way. It's like, yeah, there's no way you're supposed to go up here. It's not useful at all, players. Stay away from this area. No, it's actually the only way that you can get to six. Now we got a ton of time. That's because we grabbed the clock and we knew exactly where we were going, but yeah. That's definitely a place that a, a novice player wouldn't think to check unless they looked at the game fact that was mentioned earlier. Alright, we're going to warp here to level 12. That's where the levels really start getting punishing there. So we'll try and not get hit by blobs or glop guns. I think I shot one, it's not too bad. Do I hear this music in my sleep? Uh, I play a bunch of other games that also have really repetitive music, so... Uh, this week, yeah, sure, I hear this music in my sleep. But it's not bad, I actually really like this music. Alright, so... This level is similar to Velodrome from earlier, but the numbers are scattered around in a lot of different places. So, we need to kind of budget these skates here. Um, the reason being is that they don't stack on top of one another. They don't... First of all, they definitely don't make you go any faster. But basically, when you have a skate, it's kind of like a timer of, hey, the next 15 seconds, you're going to be able to go really fast, man. Doesn't that sound fun? You want to go real fast? And, uh, yeah, you're like, yeah, okay, cool. I don't want one, I just want two. Well, when you get the second skate, it doesn't give you 30 seconds of going really fast. It just resets the timer back to 15 seconds. So, we want to kind of budget them so that we do not grab them until we absolutely need them. So, we're going to leave that one alone. We'll leave this one alone down here. We're going to need that one for the end. We're going to grab this one to go get seven. You can see compared to Velodrome, this is a much longer stage of the conveyors in between. But the skate really, really, really lets us um, fight the currents well, too. Like, I'm going against the conveyors in that one slot there because I'm in the, I'm, I have the skates. But if I don't have the skates, it's not so easy to do that. That's actually a really tough target to hit. Um, it's kind of like a five or six frame window there and you're going so fast you don't really know when it's coming but um, you're throwing this the tomato just a touch faster than you're actually skating so you can't even see your tomato on the screen if it's lined up correctly all right here's the last of our really punishing maze levels we just have to know exactly where to go to save the most amount of time we only got four more levels after this but they are they are some bangers there you gotta be careful in those all right so Watch the blob. We just got there a little bit too late. If you get there a little bit earlier, you can kind of one-cycle that blob and not have to stop. That's a tough one there. The blobs have the similar miserable hitboxes that the bumpers do. We know exactly what tunnels to take because we've played this game before. Watch out for the banana guy here. Use the turn around. And then we're going to hit the right target down here before the left one because it's much easier to grab the key from it. Because if that guy is just unloading bananas on us, that, that right target's a lot harder to get to. Alright, this next level is probably the toughest level in the game. Um, the ice physics make it very difficult to try and control. There's a lot of blobs. But more importantly, the, the two targets that we need to get out of here are guarded by some bumpers. So we need to try and hover on the ice as best as we can to not get pushed away too far. And we also got to try and hit the targets in order. That's a good point. That kind of messes up our timing a little bit. Yep, we got blobbed as a result. Alright, so three is over here, hidden in this area. We gotta get past this bumper, though. You can either try to thread the needle, which is really, really difficult on ice, or you can shoot it a bunch of times. The hardest part about shooting it a bunch of times is if you happen to get bananaed and you go off screen, the HP of the bumper resets. So you gotta really just kinda slow it down and pace yourself. You can see our timer's in single digits. That's not happened much at all this game. Alright, three levels to go. 
Uh, the world record run from the other day saved six seconds at this level. Um, this is the the biggest time saved by far, uh, mostly because of a lucky bounce off of a blob that kind of helped us save a whole bunch of time through the um, opposite conveyors there. Might be too dangerous to try during a marathon, but we'll see how much time is left on our clock when we get to it. We'll just navigate here. Really don't want to get shot at all. I gotta save every second we can. Oh, that's, that's fine. So the, the trick was that I would actually want to intentionally hit that blue blob with the intent of it sending me down here so fast that I fight these conveyor belts faster than I normally would. But we were running way too close on time to try to it, so... We'll just do it the old-fashioned way instead. Alright. These next two levels are quite lengthy, so, um... It means you get to hear all, the whole song. You actually get to hear the whole song loop around, which we don't get to do very often. This one's got a pretty good, uh... 8-bit guitar sound and solo in the middle of it. Not for a while, though. I I'll make sure I get quiet during the breakdown. So, uh, Dave Sanger's wonderful track here can get heard. Alright. And you can just see all the odds are over there on the right, and all the evens are on the left. So we're just gonna try and get back and forth here without getting lit up too much in this little gauntlet. Save as much time as we can. I grabbed the clock at the beginning for safety there. I have to go up here, then down and up through these, and then down below the bananas and up above these block guns, because they, they rotate clockwise when I get to them and they spawn. Watch out for that blob. Stay low during this part. Don't get banana either. Alright. Here comes our, our breakdown. I'm going to let Dave Sanger's music speak for itself. That's right up there with all the greats. I don't know about you guys, but when I go to bars, I don't say play Freebird. I say play level 12-5 Funhouse NES. That's, that's what really gets me going. Alright, last level of the game. A lot of bumpers, a lot of ice, a lot of skates. We're going to kind of cheat on this level. We're not going to do it the way the designers uh, or intended me to. Rather than going over here and getting all the even ones and then um, going south, there is a north tunnel here that goes from west to east, and a tunnel on the bottom that goes from east to west. So they kind of want you to go like in a little clockwise loop over and over again. But if you grab the skates early enough and run fast enough, you can kind of cheat and go against the, the intended pattern they wanted you to go with. Um, so we're going to save that skate for after we get target 8 and we want to go get 9. That way we don't have to go to the south one here. Right, I'm going to avoid that skate and grab this one. The strategy being that I'm going to grab five and then immediately turn around. Because you saw six was right there on the south part of this other room. So we're going to sprint back here against the current. Shoot six. We're going to grab this skate. Let us run through here as fast as humanly possible. We're going to shoot seven. This is the hardest part, is now not hitting any of these bumpers as we go through here. Because ice with skates is... You'd think it would be easier, but it's not really easier. Right, we'll grab the 8, we'll grab the last super skate here and fight the current to go to 9. Time's gonna happen when I grab the key on target number 9 here. Whoa! And that's time! Oh, I thought it was gonna be time. I guess my uh, live split went inactive there. There it is. I think it was like a 27.51 or something. I wanted the sub 28, so we did that. That's pretty good. That would be, that would have been good for world record last year. <laughs> well, it certainly was fast spaced. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why the timer's not stopping. It just wants to keep going. Oh, there the we go. Party that 20 20 20 20. 20. All right. So, um, that's Funhouse. 
Uh, I really appreciate you guys having me here, and hope you enjoyed watching uh, one of the 90s failed TV shows turn into a video game. Like I said, there's uh, some other great ones out there. Um, there's a, a long line of great NES games that people have kind of just dismissed because they're not uh, they're not just like the movie or just like the TV show. So um, if you're looking for something fun to run, try something like that. I think those are certainly good ones and, and worth exploring once in a while there. Um, any other questions? We finished a little early there, so um, if there's any questions in the chat or whatever, I'd be happy to help. And Maximum Color, if there's anything you wanted to add, if we had any donations or anything like that. Um, we don't have any. Uh, we do not have any donations at the moment. Um, but I mean, I just I'll point out that game reminded me a lot of uh, the controls of like Micro Machines or something. Is it similar to something like that? Micro Machines. Funny you mentioned Micro Machines. That is also a game that I've played a lot of before. So, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of just top-down driving games in general. If you find my speedrun profile, uh, Super Sprint, Micro Machines, Super Off-Road. I've got times on all those kind of games. I love the top-down racing games in general. This plays similar to a top-down racing game for sure with the up-and-down buttons not doing anything. So that's a really good comparison. That's probably why I like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that's the game. There's no other tricks. Oh, yeah, you can see in the credits here, there are only about, like, six people who made this game. One guy did all the music, one guy did all the levels, and in also typical NES fashion, we can't reset, we can't go back to the title screen. I'm mashing all the buttons here. Nothing really does anything. We're just stuck watching this wonderful loop of uh, pixelated cheerleaders congratulating us on winning the game. So... That's, that's Funhouse. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys having me. Um, if you're interested in other retro games like this, give me a follow or um, you know check, check out games like this for yourself, and we'd love to have more people play them. So thanks so much to Pace. Thanks so much for everyone who's donated so far, even if it didn't happen during my run. It's a great cause. Um, I'll turn it back over to Maximum Color here and uh, the rest of the Pace crew. Um, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at. All right. Uh Thank you again, DJ, and thank all thank all of you lovely audience members. I just want to take a quick moment to remind everyone that any donations that we receive are going directly to the Hackensack Medical Health Center uh, to help fight against COVID-19. I will pop up the donation link in the chat there for you guys, and stick around for Mario Golf, run by Blue Candy in about five or ten minutes or so.